In this video, we're going to show to the player just how many coins they've collected over the course of the game. So in order to do that, we're going to have to learn about how to use named variables. So now our coin pickup now works perfectly, but now I want to know how many coins I have collected because once I collect all the coins in the level, I can then move on. So to do that, we're going to have to learn a bit more about Kismet. So we're going to go back into Kismet, and then instead of being in the coin pickup sequence where we were earlier, we want to be in the main sequence where everything is. And I can click here to see that if we're not there already. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a new integer variable, which UDK calls int for short. Now an integer is basically any whole number value, so no decimals. And that's perfect for storing the number of coins we've collected. So to create an int, we're going to need to right click and then go to new variable, int, and then int. Now if you'll look at the middle here, you'll notice that the value of this integer is now zero, which is perfect because we haven't collected a coin yet. But if I ever wanted to change the value of the object under int value, I can type in whatever I want. So here if I type 10, it becomes 10. So I'm gonna change it back to zero. Now, if we left click on the object to select it, you'll notice that the property windows show up for this object, just like every other object. Under the sequence variable section, you'll see this var name variable. We're going to actually type in a name here, so instead of none, we're going to put in num coins, number of coins. And you'll notice that once I hit enter, now that text shows up on the screen. Now by giving this variable a name, we're allowing anything inside of this sequence or inside any child sequence, like coin pop-up, to be able to access and use this variable by using something called a named variable. So let's do that now. So inside your subsequence that we made in the last video, at the very end, we want to create an add int action, an add integer action by right clicking and then selecting new action, math, and then add int. This gives us three different variable links, which have a, b, and then int result. You'll notice that the shape is different on the int result, and that's because it takes the values of a and b, adds them together, and gives us the int result, which is the actual result of the addition. Now what we want to do is we want to add one to our numcoins variable that we've created earlier. So to do that, first, under b, I want to create a new int variable with a value of 1. So to do that, I'm going to right click, create new int variable, and then collect 1. Then hit enter. Now we want to create a name variable so that we can access the numcoins number anywhere inside of our code. So to do that, I'm going to right click, and then select new variable, named variable. Once this is up, you'll notice this big red X in a series of question marks showing up. That's because it doesn't know what variable we're trying to talk about. And we can fix this by once again going inside of its properties. So under there, under sequence var's names, you'll notice that there's an expected type and a find var name. So we're going to change find var name into num coins. And when I hit enter, now it's giving me a check. Now you'll notice that the color here is this blackish color, but if I change the expected type to int or connect the A to this, it'll change the actual color. Now with that's connected, and then we connect the out from the toggle to the in of the add int, this whole event should carry out. So just to confirm that everything is working correctly, let's print the value of our coin to the screen. So in order to do that, we're going to need to create a log action. So to do that, we're going to need to right click and select new action, 
misc, and then log. Under target, we want to put our player variable like before, so new variable, player, player, connect that there, and then connect the out to the in for the log variable. Now, what we need to do next is the log variable will only let us connect something if we expose that variable inside of the action. So in order to do that, I'm going to right click on this action and select expose variable and then int. And that's going to give me this int that I can now put there. So when I connect here this int to num coins, after this happens, it's going to print out the value of num coins. So I'm going to close this out and then I'm going to hit play and then in editor. And then I'm going to walk over here. And you'll notice the value is zero. Now why is that? Well, if you go back into Kismet, you'll see that we do indeed add num coins in one, but we don't set the actual result. So to do this addition so that we're incrementing the value of num coins by one, we need to have num coins be the int result as well. So it's going to go from zero, zero plus one becomes one. To see that, we're gonna go play the game again, go back through the editor, walk on through, and you'll see that the variable is now one. Now at this point, you should see one, and now when we collect a bunch of different coins, we'll be able to see all of them that we've now collected. And now we can create a bunch of coins, which will be quite useful, and we'll now learn how we can use prefabs to do this quite easily in our next video.